I'm Emily Sullivan, author of Verbal Abuse and Relationships and blogger here at HealthyPlace.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I will be discussing verbal abuse and the codependent love addict. Verbal abuse and the codependent love addict are often very well acquainted because verbal abuse is a common behavior for the narcissistic love addict. And the narcissistic love addict and the codependent love addict often are drawn to each other like a moth to a flame. Uh, they are yin and yang to each other's issues and often feed off of each other. Codependent love addicts often exhibit problematic behavior that makes them more susceptible to suffering verbal and physical abuse, more susceptible to ending up with narcissists. Some of this behavior includes being very out of touch with reality, holding on to the falling in love and the person they fell in love with rather than the person they're in a relationship with today. People change, as we all know, right? Uh, some, sometimes you'll hear a, a codependent love addict say something like, deep down, he's a really good guy. While I understand how you may feel this way and how saying things like that must really make you feel better, I've said things like that. It's a baloney statement. Saying that somebody is a really good person deep down is essentially saying that they're a pretty bad person on the outside. That if all of their goodness is this theoretical hidden goodness deep down inside of them that nobody gets to experience, it's basically saying that they behave terribly, and terrible behavior should not be tolerated. Other problematic behaviors that codependents exhibit are things like enabling uh, an inability to set boundaries for themselves, uh, having a rescue mentality, and fitting themselves into a caretaker role. Often codependents will find themselves feeling guilty for even thinking about leaving these relationships, no matter how much abuse they're suffering, because they've convinced themselves it's up to them to love this person enough to change them, or that their issues are more important than your treatment. So how do we get this cycle to stop? How do we end the abuse and the honeymooning and everything that these chaotic, toxic relationships entail? There is hope. Don't worry, there's hope. Uh, you need to reach out. Reach out to online communities like Healthy Place. Reach out to your family and your friends who will build you up and remind you that you are worthy of love and being valued because you are. And reach out to therapists. Reach out to 12-step groups. You are so much better off not trying to get through this alone. There are resources available to you that will help you get through this, help you move on with your life. If you go to 12-step meetings like Love Addicts Anonymous, you'll have a whole support system there. You'll meet tons of people who are going through very similar things that you are. And even if you don't like it, you will walk away having learned something. If you go see a therapist, you'll have a more one-on-one -on -one experience and you can have a very detailed plan on uh, how to get better, how to seek treatment, how to move on. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you continue to check out my blogs. Okay.